What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 80 of On Shape. We're going to be making our follower rods today along with our bushings. And then I've done some very specific design things to help us our assemblies later. You'll notice that my follower feet have a point to them, and that helps out downstream when it comes to assemblies. But for right now, let's get hopping on and let's go back to our box. We have so far, we have our two main folders, we have two sub assemblies, and we're going to start a new sub assembly today, and that's going to be our followers. So I'm going to click on the sketch, go ahead and click on this top plane, hit view normal two. And I'm going to draw a line all the way across. I'm going to right click and make that a construction line because I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to reference that geometry. We're going to hit R for rectangle. And I'm going to give it a dimension of a quarter inch to make it a square for my square dowel rod. This really helps prevent the uh, making sure our followers don't twist while we actuate the automata. We just want to make sure that it's a straight up and down motion. If you want a little bit of a twist to it, of course, you're going to use a circular dowel rod. And then let's give this a distance of three quarters of an inch from the side wall. Next thing I believe we're going to do is we're going to draw two other circles, very similar to how we did our end caps. We're going to do our bushings here. So this outside one is going to be a half inch, and this inside circle is going to be three eighths. And that looks good to me. We're gonna hit the green check mark. And you might go, oh, well, don't we need to put the holes in for all the other ones? We're gonna try to use the linear command in a way I don't typically use it, but just to show you something new, right? I'm gonna hit e, Shift E for extrude, and we're gonna go ahead and remove just the inside circle and the square profile. Um, let's go ahead and just bring that depth up just a little bit, make sure we're actually not cutting into anything. There we go. Looks good to me. And let's name this extrusion, let's just call it clearance hole. And then I'm going to bring that sketch, let's make it active again. Let's rename that sketch while we're at it and we'll just call this follower sketch because we're going to use this for a lot of information. All right, next we got is we're going to hit Shift E for extrude again, and we're going to bring up the top part of our bushing. Let's make that a quarter inch. Let's make it a new part, and let's just call this bushing extrusion. Okay, looks good to me so far. We're just going to rotate down to this bottom side, Notice that my box starts to get in the way, or if anything does get in your way, since we have composite parts now, we can just make it inactive. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that smaller inside circle. We're gonna flip that direction, and let's give this a depth of a quarter inch. Now that should be the thickness of my top wall. Just to double check, we can make it active. Looks good to me. Hot dog, looks great. Now, what I'm going to do is make our follower rod. We're going to use the same exact pieces we made so far. Well, as we go through this, let's go ahead and let's do bushing add. And I'm going to begin and then take that part and name it as well. So let's just call this bushing. I'm going to call it bushing one because we're going to have quite a few made. We're going to have five in total, right? looks good to me. I'm going to make that inactive so I can get that sketch nice and easy. And we're going to go ahead and make our follower rod and make it a two-way extrusion because we don't want to get too close to our potential cam here, but we do want to give it some link on the top side. Again, you can determine all these dimensions when you do your automata. All of these are kind of eyeball estimations just to make sure this video isn't forever long. So we're going to go ahead and call that follow rod, and it looks good to me. While we make pieces, let's name them. So we're going to call this follow rod one. Let's go ahead and give it some properties. So assign a material, probably make this out of balsa wood. 
or some type of wood. I just like choosing balsa. And assign material. We're going to give this ABS because PLA does not exist on the Onshape library. I know we could do a custom, but I want to stick with the vanilla package. And let's edit that appearance. Let's give it a nice wood color. And for our bushing, we're going to do the same color, or at least hopefully the same color, as, there we go. I want to have mental note that all the black pieces are the ones I'm going to have to 3D print. All the pieces that are wood color, we're going to make sure are, um, are wood color that we know we don't have to 3D print them, but we have to fabricate them. Okay, everything looks nice and good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and make my sketch inactive, and then we're gonna do something really interesting. We're gonna to try to do linear pattern, but not of just a sketch, but of features. So instead of a linear pattern, we're gonna call this follower rods, bushings, and clearance holes. And we're going to try to repeat a lot of features. And since we've had everything nice and easily labeled over here on the left-hand side, we can actually just click these features. And the direction we want to go in is, I'm going to click that front line here. I guess you could have you choose that center line through your sketch, but I got this front line here. It's good to go. And instead of that direction, let's flip it. Notice it's doing all of the work for me. I find this really, really fun. An instance is going to be five counts in total. And we have a little bit of an issue with a little bit of an overhang. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go back in here in my file or sketch. And I'm going to change that dimension to half an inch. Actually, I don't like that. Let's go back here. The distance between each one, I think it's going to be three quarters of an inch. There we go. Looks good to me. We just took a lot of work and repeated it to make our jobs really successful. But we forgot to do one thing. So I'm going to take a chamfer and I'm going to chamfer the bottom edge of this follower rod and notice how it comes to a single point. I'm going to call it follower foot. But it doesn't change anything else. Well, we can actually do that real quickly by taking this follower foot, pulling it up further in the timeline, and then adding that to our features. So even though we made an edit after the fact, we can always edit our timeline to make sure things adjust accordingly. Now, if this worked well, all of these parts should have, let's see, edit material. They already have the materials defined. So we actually saved a lot of time by preventing us have to do all those things. We do have to come in through here and still rename the parts. I'm going to go ahead and do that off video to make sure we're not spending a whole lot of time here. Okay, I'm going to call this done here we've got so far, we just want to clear up our workspace. All right, now that we have all of our follower rods and bushings created, what we're going to do is clean up our workspace a little bit. Since we're done with the part, at least adjusting it right now, we're going to do some smart things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the things in our design timeline, and we're going to add selection to folder, and we're going to call that follower rods. So that way, everything with our part creation in file rods falls in that folder. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my box subassembly, and I'm actually going to move this down to the bottom. Okay. Here's the reason we want to do that. I want to put my, my bushings in with my box subassembly. Since the bushings don't move respective of the box, we want to make sure that all those pieces are in there. I'm just going to make sure just that I've got all those pieces selected. So we'll take box, make it an active, and everything looks good. Okay. 
Since those pieces move irrespective of each other, we can't put them as a subassembly. What that would do is it would either A, all my follower rods would move up and down with each other, we don't want that, um, or B, um, it would cause the bushings to move with the follower rod, and we still don't want that. So by putting in them even with our box subassembly, the bushings don't move with, the, with respect to the box, everything's good there, and the follower rods get to move individually. Now, back to what we had so far. We got all of our parts, the materials there, the colors there, all we have to do is go through here and name them. I'm gonna do that off video just to save time, but you guys are awesome, stay awesome. If you got any questions, throw them down in the comment section. If you like this video, please let me know. Like and subscribe. You guys are awesome, and I will see you.